I will present the, the systems that we have biometric box developed for the Easy Disk Proof Challenge. I would like to start by doing a bit of a spoiler and highlighting what were our main findings so that you know what to expect from the task, from the talk. So first of all, we work on the logical access and the physical access tracks. Uh, our first finding is uh, we found a lightweight a neural network architecture with a very small number of parameters and that uh, worked well uh, for both of the tasks, uh, LA and PA. Uh, second finding, we use uh, focal loss as a way to handle class imbalance. This is an idea borrowed from the computer vision field. And third, we propose what we think is a very interesting uh, one class classifier on top of a neural network embedding. So now onto the systems, our approach to the physical Hand, we try to have a main system with the best possible performance. And on the other hand, we try to develop uh, complementary systems that will increase the discriminative power of a system fusion. So our main system uses a chain line neural network, a TDNN, that is well known in the speaker recognition field. It has a first set of layers that operate at the frame level. Then there is a pooling layer that aggregates over time and compute uh, statistics. And then there is a final set of layers that operate at the utrans level. As simple features, we use a uh, high resolution MFCC features. And as I already mentioned, we use uh, focal loss instead of, instead of the traditional cross entropy criterion for uh, as the objective function. So the basic idea of this loss is to give more emphasis to hard to classify examples and less to the easy ones. And it's, uh, it seems to work uh, particularly well for class imbalance problems, like, like the problem at hand. Finally, for data augmentation, we created three new versions, three new versions for uh, each of the training samples, two speed perturbation and one version by using a uh, reverberation. The complementary systems use a very similar TDNN architecture, although it is a smaller version. And they use different kinds of uh, acoustic features. So we use MFCCs, log filter back energies, constant Q capsule coefficients, and also a uh, spectral centric magnetic coefficients. And finally, we also have the embedding system that I will go into a bit more detail later. So that's it for the physical access uh, task. For the logical access task, we work with three systems. The first two are the two deep learning baselines from the organizers. And the third one is a lightweight TDNA architecture, similar to the uh, other two I just presented, but with a much smaller uh, number of parameters. It's uh, much smaller than the other two. It uses also uh, MEL frequency capsule coefficients as input, and it was also trained using a uh, focal loss instead of cross entropy. For that augmentation, we took uh, each training sample and applied a number of transformations in order to obtain robustness against the transmission channel and coding effects that are present in the evaluation data. So this transformation could be grouped in two categories, uh, telephony and multimedia. For telephony transformation, we use some commonly used codecs in telephony scenarios. And we also applied an aggressive energy-based bat voice activity detection to remove science portion because that's something that some switchboard configuration do. And for the multimedia transformation, we use uh, three well-known codecs at different bit rates, both uh, constant and variable. So onto the results, these are our preliminary results on the physical access uh, task. Comparing the first two rows, we can see that focal loss uh, provides a nice improvement over the usual cross entropy criterion. And then focusing on the choice of neural network architecture, we see that the those results are obtained by the large TDNN, followed by the regular TDNN, and then the lightweight TDNN that I introduced for the LA task is behind the other two in terms of performance, but it is still uh, manages to obtain competitive results. So it's a nice finding considering the, the very uh, reduced number of parameters of this model. These are our complete results. Uh, the, the baselines are shown in green, our individual systems in blue and 
system fusions are in, in green. First of all, we can see that uh, the best performing system is, is in fact our main system, the large PNN system that provides around a 15% relative error reduction with respect to the, to the best baseline. And if we see the results in green, we can see that the fusion of our system, A2F, uh, provides a very nice improvement over our best uh, single system. And that's so even though some of the individual systems are not so strong by themselves, but they, they provide complementary information that is good for, for the fusion. And the last result that was our best result is also adding the GMN baselines to the fusion, which provides a, even a, a slightly better result. These are the results for the logical access task. Again, the baselines are in green, in gray, uh, individual systems in blue and fusion in green. First of all, by comparing A and B, C and D and E and F, we can see that that augmentation was very successful for all the architectures, providing much better results. And then by comparing F and G, we can see that uh, focal loss also provided uh, a very nice improvement on, on performance with respect to cross entropy. And of course, the, the best result was obtained by the fusion of all three systems, obtaining around a 30% 30, 30 relative error reduction with respect to the, to the best baseline. So to before finishing, I would like to get back to the physical access task and present some post-evaluation results that we obtained with the uh, embedded system that I just mentioned before. So here, the idea is to use the neural network not as a binary classifier, but instead as an embedding structure so that we take the output of this intermediate layer and we obtain uh, embeddings. As you can see from this 2D plot, these the embedding seems to carry very good discriminative information. Both classes are very well separated. So we can use these embeddings as input and feed them to a downstream uh, binary classifier, like for example, a super vector machine or a random forest, or uh, we propose the use of a Gaussian linear classifier. So from the table, you can see that the Gaussian linear classifier indeed uh, obtained the, the, the best results. It overperforms the use of the neural network as a binary classifier. And it also worked better than the other binary classifier, like super vector machines. So it became our best individual system overall. And uh, what we found most, most interesting about this system is not only that it achieved good results, but also that although the embedding extractor is trained using data for both classes, uh, genuine and spoof. The classifier itself is a one class classifier. So it's trained only on genuine data. So we think this could be an, a very interesting property in the sense of providing a stability and avoiding overfitting to a specific attacks and so on. So it seems to be a, at least an interesting uh, line for future research. So just to, to sum up again, we propose a lightweight architecture that uh, works well across both tasks, even though it's, it has a a smaller number of parameters than uh, the other architectures. We successfully use focal loss as a way to handle class imbalance. And it also worked well across the different tasks, architectures, and input features. And finally, we propose uh, what we think could be a very interesting one class classifier on top of a neural network embedding. That's all, thank you very much.